Hi everyone, it's Camille and today we are going to boss some traders around using supervisors. If you want to follow along, read the description below. Uh, otherwise, if you want to support my channel, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe. Enjoy! First, let's look at the current situation. Inside IEX session, we are starting the knife trader process using start link function. It creates a link between two processes and because our session process doesn't trap exits, by default, whenever trader dies, our session dies with it. We can do much better than that with a little bit of help from Elixir and OTP. Let's introduce a supervisor above our trader process. It will trap exits and revive our trader when it crashes. This looks much better, but there are a few problems with it. So when the trader will start to place orders, it will be in some state that the supervisor won't be aware of. When the trader will crash, the supervisor will start a new trader without any knowledge of those possibly placed orders. We need to keep a copy of the trader's state outside of the trader. That's why we will introduce a new server called leader that will keep track of that. The naive leader became our interface to start the new trader. It will call the start child function of the supervisor. Then consequently supervisor will end up calling the start link function of our trader. We can also see that our naive trader is now started with the temporary restart option. This will disallow the supervisor to restart the trader on its own. The responsibility of restarting has now shifted to the leader. It monitors the trader and restarts it to a correct state when it crashes. This setup will allow us to start and supervise multiple traders for a single symbol, which our naive strategy will require in the future. On the other hand, we will need the same free services for each trading symbol. We can replicate this pattern of the leader once again above our free processes to enable us to dynamically start and stop trading on multiple symbols. Here at the bottom we can see the same free processes from the previous slide that allowed us to have multiple traders per symbol. Above them we use the same pattern to allow us to trade multiple symbols at once. Starting from the top, the naive application is our top level application supervisor. It's already there, we will need to add two children to it, the naive server and dynamic supervisor. Naive server will be our interface to start trading on a symbol. It will start a new symbol supervisor under the dynamic supervisor. Symbol supervisor will have two children, leader and the dynamic supervisor, both created on init. This can be a little bit confusing at the moment, but it will get a lot easier as we will write the code. So let's get to it. Let's start by adding a dynamic supervisor and a server to the children list of the naive application supervisor. Now we can create a skeleton implementation of the naive server itself. It will be a box standard gen server that we will upgrade in a moment, but at this time it will be enough to get our code to compile. Next, time for a symbol supervisor. There's no point of using a dynamic supervisor here, as we know the children that we would like to start automatically on init. This is a full implementation of the supervisor and it's as simple as just listing its children inside the init function. It's better to keep it this way as it's advised to avoid putting any logic inside the supervisor. Registering a symbol supervisor with a name will help us to understand the supervision tree inside the observer. It's time for the naive leader module. At this moment it will be a skeleton gen server implementation, just to get the code to compile.
As we have all modules in place, we can now focus on providing implementation for a naive server module. It will store details of currently trading symbols including pits and monitor refs of simple supervisor processes. The naive server will provide a function to start trading on a symbol. It's a common practice to provide an interface function that will hide the implementation details. Here we need to cast a message to the server process. Server will hold a map with symbols pointing to the refs and pits of the symbol supervisors associated with them. We will update that map every time we will start trading on a new symbol. To start a symbol supervisor under the dynamic supervisor, we will use the start child function. Additionally, we will monitor the symbol supervisor so we can restart it whenever it crashed. At this moment, we have half of the supervision tree working, so we can give it a spin in IEX. Using the observer, we will be able to see all the processes created when the start trading function gets called. Naive supervisor is our application module. It starts the dynamic supervisor together with the server. We can now call the start trading function a couple times to see how the tree will look like with additional processes. We can see that two new branches were created, one symbol supervisor for ADA USDT and another one for XRP USDT. Both of them contain a leader and a dynamic supervisor each. Let's jump back to extending a leader implementation to get those traders running. Leader's state will consist of symbol, settings and a list of trader data. Trader data will hold PIT, REF and state of the trader. We will use a handle continue callback which was introduced in Erlang21 to initialize the leader asynchronously. To do that we will need to return a tuple starting with a continue atom from the inside of the init function. The leader will fetch symbol settings and based on them it will build the state for the traders so they don't need to fetch the same settings again. It will also start as many traders as there were set under Chang's key in settings. Fetching symbol settings will be hardcoded for the time being to keep this episode focused. We will move the code responsible for fetching tick size from the trader to the leader and hardcode the rest of the values. Starting a new trader isn't any different from the code that we already wrote to start a new symbol supervisor. We need to call the start child function on the dynamic supervisor and start to monitor the process. We will move the fetch tick size function across from the trader to the leader module. Now we can update the trader. First we will set the restart to be temporary to avoid restarting it by the dynamic supervisor. Next we will update the start link and the init to take the state instead of building it from Rx. 
Let me stop here to explain that by deleting this name of the process we will effectively break the streaming to the trader. Issue here is that we would like to scale the amount of traders so we can't register more than one under the same name. On the other hand the streamer is using this process name to send the events to the trader. We will remove it here and fix it in the next episode where we will introduce a pub sub system to broadcast trade messages. All callbacks that change the state of the trader will need to inform the leader about that change. We will refactor those places to send new state across before returning it. Finally, we'll tidy up the trade finished callback as it was pointed out on the Elixir forum. Now we need to get back to the leader where we will implement the notifying logic. We will start with the notify function that we'll just call the leader process. Now it's time for a callback function that will handle the trader state update. As this is a call function we will have access to the trader pit which we will try to find in the list of the traders. If that's successful we will update the cache state for that trader locally. Another callback function that we will need to provide is a handle info function that will handle the trade finish scenario. As previously it will try to find the trader data in the traders list. If that's successful it will for the time being just start a new trader with the fresh state. It will also override the existing trader data locally with the new state. The final callback that we need to provide will handle that scenario when the trader crashed. We would like to find the cached state of the crashed trader and start a new one with the same state and then update the local cache as PID and REF will change for that trader. That finishes the implementation part, let's jump into IEX session to see how it works. We will start the observer first, follow up by starting trading on any valid symbol.
When our trader will start, we will kill it to confirm that it gets restarted. Here we can see that the PID of the trader changed and we can also see log message from the leader. Thanks for staying tuned till the end. The structure that we built today will be utilized in the future videos. If you like those episodes and you would like to support my channel, don't forget to leave the thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next episode.